can we talk about your grieving process because mm-hmm. you had to grieve in public? Right. And then as comedians, we don't really get days off. You kind of have to keep going. Right. And so can you talk us through that process and did it help that you were working or how did you feel? For me, like, uh, for those that don't know, my son passed away in a car accident uh, August 3rd, 2021. He was 21 years old. Um, his friends, Natalie and Jaden, also passed in a crash. They were hit by, uh, these guys were racing in Burbank, and they hit uh, my sons in them car. And so they died on impact. So with, when that happened, um, you know, certain comedians, they found out and they posted about it and stuff like that. And then, you know, I released the statement that it happened. And then, you know, I pretty much mourned publicly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would still do lives and I would still, uh, you know, tell the people what was going on. And... Um, you know, I mourned in real time, and and I was cracking jokes mm-hmm. immediately. Like immediately. the day the day that it happened, I had some jokes. Like tears, you know, yeah. and you know, Sabrina was there at Ground Zero when I got the call, and that's another thing I want to say to you about cats. They do care huh. because when I got the news about Serene and I was crying my eyes out. The cats were looking at me differently. They mm. were like, Midnight was trying to get close to me for some reason. Like he busted up in the room aggressively because they're not allowed in the bedroom. Mm-hmm. And he was just in my face. And Dapper was just like eye contact city. So I was like, they be knowing. They, they be know, feeling yeah. stuff. So with my grieving process, for me, I love doing stand-up comedy. So for me, it's a form of therapy that helped me out a lot. Yeah. Uh, Serene, we lost Serene August 3rd. I was back on the road August 25th in Atlanta. I did the Atlanta Comedy Theater. That was my first. Uh, that was my first gig on is the that road. Gary, yeah, mm-hmm, it is. So I was nervous because mm-hmm. you know the audience was mourning with me in real time. So I didn't know if they were going to laugh at all. So it was a scary time, but uh, I needed that outlet to help me process, you know, all of this. Mm-hmm. And so you you. You find you don't know how you'll react until it happens, unfortunately. Like, you know, because I used to think, like, man, you see parents that have lost their kids to police violence or gang mm-hmm. violence, and they be on the news, and they be talking and forming complete sentences and, like, you know, saying stuff to the press. I'm like, how are they able to talk when they just lost their child? And then when I get put in that situation, I'm like, I'm sitting here talking, forming complete sentences, laughing. And I'm just like, I never would have thought I'd be able to even function losing my son like that. So it just taught me a lot. And it taught me how to be there for people when they go through something now. Mm-hmm. Being there in real time at ground zero, seeing how people show up or disappear. You know, you see both That's sides right. of that. Like, oh, you disappeared. And, oh, you vanished. Like, my my dad and my oldest brother disappeared. Mm-hmm. If they watch this interview, they're going to be like, well, we were just giving you the space. Mm-hmm. And I told y'all, I was like, I don't need y'all to give me space. Yeah. I just need y'all to, you know. Be. Be, you know, just text me. Just say, hey, Tom, what you doing? Nothing. And so, you know, and then finding out how my mom and my other brother handled it and then came out here and showed up. A lot of people overthink grief. Okay. They overthink like, okay, they just lost somebody. Uh Oh, I gotta say something deep. I gotta say something hard hitting. Mm-hmm. I gotta come with the oh, you know, well, you know, it's God's plan. You know, maybe this is a. You don't have to do all that. Just be around. Just reach out. What's going on? How you feeling? And so I feel like when people vanish, they do care about you. They just they don't, don't know, know to what deal. to say. Yeah. They don't know how to act. They don't know how to you know. Like Jasmine, for example, when we were at Teddy Ray's um, Memorials. memorial at the Ha Ha, shout out to Teddy Ray who passed recently. I was crying at the thing. She just hugged me. Mm-hmm. There was no, we didn't have to have a discussion. We didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? You know, life yeah. is about, you know, <laughs> hanging in there. Right. It was none of that. It was just like, I didn't even know who was hugging me at one point because I was crying like this. So I just felt somebody hugging me. And then another person, it was her and Keetra. Mm-hmm. Hold me. So I didn't know it was them until I came out of the the wave of emotion. I was just like, "Oh man, what's up, y'all?" You know. So, yeah. but just those silent moments of just like compassion go a long way. So if you ever, you know, you have a friend or family member that lost somebody super close, you don't have to overthink the support. Yes, you can just show up and be like, "What did you have for dinner last night?" and go from there. Mm-hmm. 
on you. <laughs> jump, 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 jump. What we done started. Look at what we done started. This the people party. When opportunity jump, knock it, then young nigga move that door. Whoa, get your foot stuck in it, call me young, go get it. Now you can't fuck with it, my slow one with it. What's the world with it?